Hello and welcome Exiles to my Retaliation Ward Slayer. Now, before we get into the details of what I'm doing here, why I have 12,000 Ward, I'm gonna go ahead and run a Phoenix map for you, just to give a little showcase of what the build looks like while mapping. I decided I wanted to ping pong between multiple retaliation skills. Originally, I started out with Cyclone, which is for the spinny AoE and the fun well, times, but since then I've moved on to doing just both retaliation that. skills and ping pong between them with Crushing Fist and Eviscerate. Now I have to say, from my experience so far, um, Crushing Fist, I think is just a far superior skill. Has insane AOE and range, you see how far that thing goes out. And its hit is about 20% higher at base, so it hits a lot, a lot harder. The way retaliation skills are work, pretty simple. You need to block, if you've blocked, then you can use the skill, that's how they activate. And then there's a cooldown from the last time they've been activated that you can use them again. As far as I can tell, they are basically unusable unless you have the Gladiator node measured retaliation, which is what I'm using right now, which basically gives a 50% chance to not use or put the skill on cooldown. Otherwise, your time between skill use would be very, very long. I am combining this with the uh, node that gives 25% chance for when you use a retaliation skill to bring another off cooldown and another 10% mastery for that exact same stat. That all combined with the big notable, the hidden notable, that gives 20% chance to not put a retaliation on cooldown means basically I can ping pong fairly consistency, consistently between the two skills as long as I've been hit semi recently by an attack or by something. Now I should probably take off the speed try just so I don't have that on for the boss here. I don't want to give you guys a false representation of what the damage looks like, but it pretty much just looks like this. That's pretty decent, I think, for having 85% more monster life and 45 chaos res. This character is a full chaos damage build, and those mods are very significant in terms of making that boss four times to five times as tanky as it would be otherwise. So hopefully that's a decent showcase of the fact it can do fairly good damage, and it can chain a decent amount of those attacks back to back. Now, let's get into the basics of what I'm doing here to set up for this character just to break it down, so to speak. I am using specifically the Night Grip gloves. These gloves give you 10% of your ward as chaos damage. You'll notice I have 12k ward. That means this is giving me 1200 flat chaos damage. This means the Paradoxica, although normally is a sword that has no flat damage, scales quite well when you pair it with something like this, which gives a bunch of flat chaos. So that's the idea. And how do we get this ward? It's basically just through the new Yin to Stand belt. This belt with quality, it starts out at 50% armor and evasion as ward, but it goes all the way up to 60%. Pairs quite nicely with the new bases. You can get easily 4K, 4K plus. Uh, here, I just have a 3.8, 3.7. This is like a T1, T2, T1 situation for hybrid. This is a pretty good dense fossil spam is what you want to do if you're going to craft this and then do some tailing orbs for 8% defense is what I recommend. Um, so the idea is bunch of evasion, bunch of armor on a chest piece, and then using this belt, we get a ton of base ward. So with 8K, let's just say 8K is the raw number, 60% of that is 4,800 ward. So when you have 4,800 ward, it's pretty easy with a little bit of increases to ward for that to scale quite nicely. And hence we combine it with faith guard. Now, I don't think I'm particularly min-maxing this well at all. I think there's probably some weird potential for some like in stack weird shenanigans where you could push this number really high up. I mostly just have, um, I have the flat ward from here, and then I have a little bit of it. I have about 200 in, and then I have one key piece that gives me a lot of percent, which is this thing right here, Light of Meaning. You'll see where the difference in this is giving us going from 8K ward to 12K ward. Now, something I want to note, Light of Meaning, uh, when I checked it out, has, I believe it's quite a bit more expensive than, oh, I'm going to find where I put this. The light of meaning for percent. Oh, here it is. The light of meaning for, for percent ES is very expensive. I think it's ballooned up because of Trickster. Uh, what I recommend if you don't want to spend 18 divines because it's a huge price point in the way where it can really gouge you for price for trying to make this character or replicate it, is just get a light of meaning with percent chaos damage. You'll notice our average damage goes from 512 to about 440 average hit. That is about, I want to say, 20% less damage, something like that. You're still going to be shredding T16s. You're still going to be able to kill T17s. Um, but 
it isn't going to um break the bank so if you want a more cost effective solution percent cast damage i recommend now you might be thinking lance you just dropped a lot of war does not ruin the defenses of the build no it does not ruin the defenses of the build the way these gloves work as far as i understand is when an enemy hits you with the way ward mechanics work is they will absorb one hit and they can absorb as much damage as they can absorb and then it'll disappear and so if you get hit by for example 5k damage about uh i don't know 75 percent of that not about just exactly 75 percent of that will bypass and go straight to my life pool with 7k ward which is what we'd have if we have or 8k ward if we if we have this out if we have a hit that's going to have enough damage to bypass uh up to 3500 my hp pool that happens well before you get to 8k ward because if you th like think about the proportions for the whole ward to be effective i would need to have um four times the hp pool or something or three times the hp pool you get what i'm saying so i would need like a 24,000 life pool for this all the ward to be used uh so the point is this is only an offensive upgrade it's not defensive even though the ward looks cooler it looks like it's more tanky it's only an offensive upgrade as far as i understand how these gloves work speaking of ward though is i feel a fairly substantial nice additional boost to defenses because it doesn't give me like a 7k extra hit pool but it gives me about an extra i don't know 1500 1200 whatever it is hit pool to my 3500 hp life and with faster start or, or faster restoration of ward that comes back every 0.9 seconds you pair that with our savalan shield which we have 65 65 lucky block which means we block about 88 percent of all attack and spell damage it ends up feeling quite consistent where that thing pops up and it's there for almost every hit you take for the most part and you'll see that in the gameplay how often we have downtime of ward is very very low and it feels quite good all right so that's some of the basics of the building blocks of the character um outside of that it's about stacking basically percent damage where we can with things like you know cluster jewels uh because we have a lot of we're dealing base cast damage so we need generic percent damage so most of our percent damage is coming from cluster jewels it's coming from damage with endurance charge damage with frenzy charge stuff like that generic percent damage while holding the shield nodes it's a lot of generic damage nothing cast specific nothing really melee specific too much mostly just generic percent damage and then crit chance and crit multi where we can get it that's the damage scaling and then we have of course paradoxical for the double damage and the pen with chaos <clears throat> so that's the idea of the character stack a lot of ward with the chess piece get a big flat chaos number and then use the retaliation skills the retaliation skills specifically the way they work is you have to get hit that procs your ability to use the skill where they have a duration where they become or they're active and basically once you use the skill it goes back on cooldown these things have a cooldown that's base three seconds base four seconds for a uh, crushing fist and when you look at this our cooldown time here says 0.9 and 0.1.2s respectively that's because we have cdr from these nodes here these small points as well as we are using expert retaliation it feels like expert retaliation is all but mandatory as far as i can tell in terms of making these skills a lot more poppy in terms of being able to use them a lot from what I can tell, there's also a situation where um, when you're using measured retaliation, it is all about the chance to not consume your use of your retaliation skill. Like if you don't have this, it's basically like you get hit, you get to use it once, and then you have to you have to have some like completely other supporting skill. If you want to use basically only retaliation skills, this is all but mandatory. And I will also add if you want to use retaliation skills on ubers which i did test them on ubers you probably need to add in the penance mark ring so you have something that's constantly hitting you so you can constantly be using your retaliation i would actually highly recommend it i did not do this and it was very rough on a lot of ubers where for example shaper's beam when he goes to beam that's usually your dps phase that's when you get to get the most damage in as a retaliation build if he hadn't hit me recently i had no active skill and i was just watching him beam and it, i was just twiddling my thumbs it felt stupid so Number one is you need something like measured retaliation just so you can use multiple skills in a row. And I think you need to combo it with the um, chance to activate another retaliation skill when you've used one. So the idea is with 70% ch chance to not consume, I could probably use a skill seven out of 10 times or whatever it is. And that would generate my other skill so I could use that skill and then generate the other skill and you ping pong between the two activating the others off their cooldown. And that's when you don't need to take a hit to proc them. 
I will say this for a time I was using Ventral Cry, very short time, basically last night. Uh, chat told me to try it out, and I believe I could be wrong about this. I believe this thing picks one skill to become usable, and when you use Ventral Cry, that means it kind of messes with your uptime of your other skills, or at least I felt like it did, because it might what normally would have activated my crushing fist now activates Vengeful Cry. And Vengeful Cry isn't that great to spam because it's a, a war cry, it doesn't have the same uh the same cast time of having decent attack speed and stuff like that. And on top of that, it has a uh, longer cooldown and it's not a hit that's gonna generate leech and stuff like that. So I, I prefer ping pong between two skills. But you can do this to have a higher high of max rage, and it does work decently, but I wasn't necessarily a fan of it, per se. All right, so that's retaliation skills. They're a bit weird. This is a slayer. I'm also doing some weird stuff with... I'm trying out the new uh, Sublime Vision for Purity of Ice in combination with Divine Flush to try the combination where we go for max cold and max chaos, and we don't worry about fire and lightning. I wanted to try this for a few reasons. I wanted to test it out in a way... In one, number one, a way to deal with ailments. From my experience so far of doing some damage taking conversion, this was the experience with the trickster I had. It is very effective at mitigating ailments. One of the most dangerous ailments to characters are things like shock. When I take all my lightning damage, it's either chaos or cold. I do not get shocked. I did not see shock on my character a single time outside of shock round. That was like the only way I could experience shock. And that was just not very common. It's basically just shock, shock round, map mod, and that is it. Um, so. I actually like these damage conversion jewels even more than I did before because they allow you to, one, mitigate ailments. So, for example, I could have this Purity of Ice Watcher's Eye with cold, well, fire and lightning taken as. I could blind it with Sublime Vision. So that's 50% of my lightning or lightning and fire taken as cold. And then 50% of my all my elemental damage taken as chaos, which means I don't take fire and I don't take lightning damage. And I didn't get ignited. I didn't get shocked and solved that. I think where this is going to really, really shine is with Doriani's prototype, the chest piece. I think this is fairly ideal because you don't you don't get the less damage or the less lightning res from uh, Tempered by War, so it's easier to hit the minus 200. And I think it would really shine. So strongly recommend checking this out if you're thinking about Doriani's prototype. And even if you're not thinking about Doriani's prototype, it was a way to get some decent max res. At one point, I was considering probably doing like an impossible escape here, grabbing max res here, and potentially changing my pathing to go outside to get max cold res here. And then our purity of ice plus the max rise scaling would put us like 87, 88 max rise would be pretty decent. I opted not to do that and just went for more damage because I wasn't really dying. This character while mapping, I think I died a sum total of one to two times, mainly just because of uh, degens. Just like if I stood on a degen and I wasn't leeching type of thing. Um, it was pretty rare. The block felt very good. We did a death force simulacrum that felt pretty chill. Um, so it was great against most mapping content where this character fell apart, in my opinion, was the uber bosses. It was way too clunky to rely on the uber boss to hit you they hit really hard so if you have some weird scenario where you don't block the proc your hit to start your leech to start generating your charges all this sort of stuff it really crumbles while mapping fantastic but when doing ubers it crumbled and i think you really need penance mark so that's something i would recommend if you're going to play this character probably do a penance mark ring i just have a ring with life and dex and strength because i had an attribute problem and i had a ring with some chaos res and all res which the all res really wasn't very efficient the int helped me with some of the ward scaling, but it was just kind of rare as I bought in the moment and I was happy with, but I probably should have min-max more if I really cared about it. Ultimately, this character I had a decent amount of fun with, but it was super clunky when it came to uber bosses, and I like to do this a little bit more. And I'm just excited about building more characters now and doing shorter projects, so the next project is probably going to be a Righteous Fire Chieftain because uh, I have a plan for that as well. Now, let's get into a T17 showcase. Give you guys a look of what it was, looks like to do a little bit more challenging uh, map content. And hopefully I can either convince you yay or nay. I would say retaliation skills, very good damage for the investment level, very clunky on uber bosses, acceptably clunky on mapping. That's how I'd put it. And hopefully I can showcase in this map here as we do a T17 uh, ziggurat or ziggurat. I don't know, yeah, that's it. But anyway, we'll see how this goes. Maybe I'll showcase retaliation making good. Maybe I'll showcase me flopping or doing something incredibly wrong. I don't think I will though, because so far my experience with this has been quite good. Now, initially you always have to wait for the first pack to uh, hit you initially, but after that you can pretty well, for the most part, just keep chaining your skills, going around to the various packs and hitting them with whatever you have. 
as you go around picking up loot, monsters will continually hit you. And it doesn't really feel like an issue in terms of downtime. You do have the weirdness of like, you know, you have to rotate between the skills. Did I click on this or did I not click on it? You have to rotate between the skills, right? I don't like always get to use the same skill over and over. And that is a little bit of a weird factor. I definitely took some getting used to of being like, okay, I see the symbol. I know I have, for example, the shield thing. That means eviscerate's ready. The cross sword, that's crushing fist, right? So I, I can see uh, based on the logo, like above my head, what is and what isn't available for my character to use. Um, and that took definitely some getting used to, I would say. Outside of that, when you're mapping, uh, you don't really feel like you have too much downtime on the skill. You pretty much can do whatever you want. There will be an occasion awkward situation where you run into some monster that just doesn't have a hit mechanic. It doesn't happen too much. It happens more specifically on uber bosses. That's when I actually had an issue at all with it. As for that, you still get to block a lot and have a really good time doing that. And that feels pretty good. Um, and of course, you hit enemies really, really hard. Um, so like as you can see right here we could basically like clean these bosses with just a few swipes in terms of like damage numbers i will say problematic is one of our defensive layers is endurance charges i'm not happy with the endurance charge generation i have i think i want to add an enduring composure specifically for this reason because like i have endurance charge on block i have the charge duration but it's not really enough like you can see we're generating the charges back but if there's downtime on a boss fight there's that's not ideal right um Especially when you're dealing with like you see that mechanic there that is a degen ground that deals fizz damage over time Having downtime on my endurance charges is not ideal The other thing I will say is I am doing slayer region or slayer. No, it's not slayer region slayer leech for my sustain mechanic and that works decently until um You just get a really long period without being able to fight enemies because eventually your leech does fall off like katarina for example really long freaking intermission times and doing all this stuff and stall 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 etc is not ideal this is not an ideal boss but hopefully i'm showcasing it can do the boss still fine regardless um even though these even though a lot of these dudes like have like some set of moves where they're like they're like not even hitting you and they're like wasting time etc but it is um not like something that's ending how the how it plays out finish katarina off Goodbye, Katarina. It was nice knowing you. You can see I'm showcasing, hopefully, the weakest part of the character, which is a boss where there's downtime and stuff like that. You could still do it. Hence, I would recommend the Penance Mark Ring. I didn't do it myself, but after doing Uber bosses, I'm fairly convinced that is a good way to do it because that just guarantees you keep those blocks up. You then would sustain your endurance charges consistently. You'd probably sustain your frenzy charges consistently with blood, with blood rage kills. And then on top of that, you would also sustain your box very consistently, very consistently, which is ideal. Wait, I'm just talking. Hit me. There are there are definitely scenarios where you're like you're fighting an enemy and you just start telling like, hey, please hit me, man. Please, I'm begging you. Take a swing at me. Um, but while mapping shouldn't happen too much. Boss fights mainly just ubers. It happens. But yeah pretty much just walking around and then whenever we get the blocks we get to do a super freaking big aoe eviscerate i really have to say that this is probably my favorite part of the build is just seeing that that slash go out and it just it just or it's like an eraser it just erases everything in front of you because it's it just hits so incredibly hard um and this you do one swipe and everything in that general direction is just gone Crushing Fist is cool, but for me, Eviscerate was the clear winner. If I do another Retaliation build, Eviscerate's definitely going to be on my list for skills I'm going to prioritize doing and hopefully have a lot of fun using and trying out. Um, I don't know if we have the need to showcase more of this map necessarily. I guess we could probably just pour it out here. I've, I think I've demonstrated what this character looks like doing uh, E17s and Simulacrum. I could do, but... It's good, great at mapping style scenarios in terms of defensive layers. That 88 block, block recovery, the leech, the endurance charges, the fortify with crushing fist, all that stuff works out fantastically in mapping scenarios. It does fall apart on Uber bosses specifically. I didn't have any issues with T17 bosses. I only had an issue with Uber bosses <laughs> where we failed due to not being able to proc our block skills. Hence the recommendation for Penance Mark. 
I wouldn't say this is a particularly OP build or a particularly bad build. It's pretty decent damage for the budget and it's cool for something different. I had some fun doing it. This definitely makes me want to build Ward, believe it or not. After this experience, I might do a weird Deadeye Ward setup where I go for avoidance layers like block, spell dodge, and evasion, and then pair it with some Ward scaling. I think that could be very interesting. So I'm glad I did this character. Part of me playing builds is I want to test out different skills, retaliation being one of them, test out different mechanics, like for example, the damage conversion, see how that feels as a defensive setup, and it did feel pretty decent. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. This was the Ward Retaliation Slayer. As always, thanks for watching. Take care, Exiles, and peace out. Have a good one.